Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me on this week's episode for a follow-up part two episode is Dr. Corey Bromfield. Now, if you haven't listened to part one of this uh, episode, please go ahead, hit the pause button, and go back to last week's episode to listen to Corey's introduction. If you have already caught part one of the episode, fantastic. Uh, without further ado, I would like to reintroduce introduce Dr. Corey Bromfield. Dr. Bromfield, thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, if you would, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So uh, if I'm a producer and I get a hold of you and you say, all right, yep, I'll come out to the farm on Wednesday and we'll, we'll talk through this thing. What does that look like in terms of what sort of questions should I be prepared to answer? Um, what, what are maybe, do I need any paperwork ready and how long will this process take? Yeah. So the process, um, ultimately it's going to start when somebody makes the decision that they're, they're ready to start looking at their biosecurity plan. They're ready to, to start seeing, all right, what are, what are the holes? What are the gaps we need to fill? So they're going to reach out and they're going to contact the university of Missouri extension. Um, they're going to get in touch with either me or one of my colleagues and we're going to set up that time to come out there. The first thing we want from them is we want their we want their pin. We want their premise ID number. We want to know where they are and we want to know what their boundaries are. So they can send us that pin. We'll get their address. We're going to take a look at some sort of a GPS satellite map and we're going to send it back to them to make sure this is your farm. These are the the boundaries of your farm. These are the things that you have the ability to control. Mm-hmm. Uh, once we get on that, that's when we're going to go meet in person usually. And when we meet in person is when we start to, we're going to take a look at the secure pork supply plan as it is written on the securepork.org website. A full value relationship starts with understanding your business. And Alanco knows growing the healthiest pig requires focus on every segment of production. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and actionable insights, Elanco is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions that manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. Get full value from start to finish with Elanco. We've got some nice things that are nice and easy to take a look at and try and fill out. And some of those are real easy things that you don't need me for at all. Who's your biosecurity manager? Um, Who's the first person that somebody should contact if they're coming onto your farm? Um, So a lot of these questions are things that don't necessarily need to be answered by me, but sometimes I can help because I can help direct where we need to go or what things we need to um, pay more attention to. But the real big place where I think that that we help out with is kind of that we're going to take a look at the map and we're going to take a look at the map from the standpoint of, all right, where, where do things come in? Where does feed come in? Where do animals come in? Where do people come in? Where do supplies come in? And we're also going to look at where do things go out? Because when we're talking about, you know, something like African swine fever, is there a potential for it to come into my farm? Because if there's a potential for it to come into my farm, I'd say 100% of farms in the United States have to send a pig somewhere at the end of being at that farm. Now, whether they're sending, whether they're selling semen um, or whether they're selling finished pigs or they're selling um, replacement gilts, something is going to leave their farm, right? If it didn't, we wouldn't really have an industry, I suppose. So with the th- with the fact that something's leaving their farm, that's the potential that if something got into the farm, it could go out with your product. Um, so we're, we're going to sit down, we're going to take a look at that map and we're going to start to draw in what are the places that we can actually control? Um, because a biosecurity plan on paper that we can't do doesn't matter. I, I can write you a biosecurity plan from my office, never having seen your farm. I can send it to you and you're going to look at it and go, yeah, I can't do this. And so you're going to file it away somewhere. You know, you put it in the, what we call here, the round file basket, which is the trash can. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can't do it, what good is it? Right? Like, you know, I, I could say that, sure, um, if we got African swine fever, we're just going to launch all the pigs to the moon because there's no African swine fever on the moon. That's, that's not an option. <laughs> um, 
So we're, we're going to sit down with you. Bare minimum, it's going to be about an hour to begin with. We're going to be asking questions about where things come in, where things go out. What are the things we can control? How we can change so that we can make things more secure as they're coming in. Uh, and and that, that first, I say it's a bare minimum of about an hour, often takes us about an hour, hour and a half to do one location from a map standpoint. Uh, if you've got several farms, um, several different locations that you're working on, each one of those is going to add a little bit more time. Um, the There are certain things that, that are the same maybe throughout them. You know, maybe you've got the same six people that are the, the biosecurity managers, or maybe um, they all get feed from the same feed mill. So some of those answers don't necessarily take us that much longer. Um, but it is, I mean, we're definitely asking that you're going to set up probably an afternoon, maybe a morning, um, that you're going to sit down and you're going to chat with us. Yep. So we'll take that map. We will help to digitize it because that's that's kind of the big um, the big stumbling point for a lot of people. Number one, I can I can draw a map. I can draw on top of that printed out you know GPS satellite map what, where I'm going to put my line of separation, um, where I'm going to put my perimeter buffer area, and if we get to a point where the state needs to know what you're doing, where they need your secure pork supply plan because there's been an outbreak, if I send thousands of these hand-drawn maps, the state is going to be overwhelmed. They're, they're just not going to be able to get through it quickly, right? And so the quicker that the state can get through it, the quicker that they can feel comfortable saying that your farm is is good is safe is going to be able to move safe product um so we're we help to digitize it we help to put it in the system so that that way the computers can help us out a little bit with some of the some of the questions that might be asked um and it can get to the state and they can review it so much quicker so much faster they can say yeah this is great or no we've got a question here but the faster that they can say it's good or they can ask for a question the faster you can get back to them with the answer to the question um, and potentially move along from that standpoint. Um, I've been working with, so I work mostly with RABAP, the Rapid Access Biosecurity Application, and that's put together, that was started by Gustavo Machado at NC State. Um, so I wanna make sure to thank him because that's a lot of effort and work that has been put into this that honestly, I don't think I could have done myself. Um, the computerizing, the digitizing the maps is really that, that push that's been so helpful. Um, so, so after we meet with the producer, we, we take that map, we take that information, we take their answers to their questions, we start inputting it into RabApp. And the nice thing about RabApp is that the computer will look at some of the answers and it'll kick some of them back like, hey, uh, it doesn't make sense that you said that your line of separation has zero access points, because that means nothing's coming in. Um, so granted, that's kind of a an easy thing that I should probably pick up on that the farmers would probably pick up on. But there are some things that the computer will help us, you know, like, oh, hey, we noticed a thing that just is incongruous. And so it'll kick it back to us. So we can then take that that question, that concern that the computer has, and we can run it back to the owner. Um, we can do indoor uh, raised pigs. We can do outdoor raised pigs. You know, the outdoor raised pigs have a little bit more challenge um, that goes along with them because it might be a little bit harder to control like the airspace that the pigs are in. But honestly, it, that's one of the fun things about my day is that sometimes I get to deal with a puzzle that's completely different from some other puzzle I've been working on. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Yep, and I think it's uh, wonderful to hear that you're willing to go through this process with producers no matter what their farm puzzle happens to look like. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We um, we've had the we've had the fun, the benefit, the enjoyment of working with farms that are integrated with other farms, but that happen to be a, a single producer at a single location. We've been able to work with some uh, some independents that have you know a small handful of sow farms that feed their small handful of um, 
theater to finish operations. Um, we've also had the chance to work with a couple of really niche market um, outdoor raised that are, are doing things a little bit differently. And it's, I mean, I love pork. I love to eat pork. I want to make sure that it's there. Mm -hmm. I like having options when I'm going to the grocery store. So I'm here to make sure that each one of these different styles of raising pigs gets to continue on for the next decade, um, two decades, 50 years, 100 years. I'm probably not going to be doing this for 100 years. But if we build that foundation, then, you know, it's going to keep going. Very good. Thank you so much, Corey, for all that work you're doing at the University for Missouri and uh, really appreciate you coming on and sharing all this with the audience. I was really glad to be here. Thanks for letting me chat, Clayton. Well, thanks to our audience for joining us. Uh, if you haven't visited us at the swinehealthblackbelt.com, please go check that out and subscribe, uh, like the podcast and share it with a friend if you found it enjoyable. For Dr. Corey